Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Security Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And I'm joined today by my friend, fellow analyst, engineer, and frequent co-host, Joe Peterson. Joe, welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Today's conversation centers on deception technology, which is a strategy designed to attract cyber criminals away from an enterprise's true assets and divert them to a decoy or a trap. The decoy mimics legitimate servers, applications, and data so that the criminal is kind of tricked into believing that they've infiltrated and gained access to an enterprise's most important assets when in reality, they have not. This strategy is employed to minimize damage and protect an organization's assets, obviously. And by protecting a, net a network with decoys, the onus then is on adversaries to carry out an attack nearly perfectly, flawlessly, without falling for any of the decoys or the traps that have been laid for them. Once a security team is alerted to the presence of a threat actor, they can then analyze the behavior of cyber attackers and use that intelligence to help thwart their efforts. Some organizations even deploy a centralized deception server that records the movements of malicious actors, first as they gain unauthorized access and then as they interact with the decoy. The server then logs and monitors any and all vectors used throughout the attacks. And this all provides this treasure trove of valuable data that can help the IT team strengthen their security and prevent similar attacks from happening in the future. It's probably obvious, but it's important to note that in order to function properly, Deception technology must not be obvious to an enterprise's employees, contractors, or customers. So I am so, I love this topic. I'm so excited to dive in. Joe, I know this is super interesting to you as well. So what do you think? I, you know, one of the questions that I know immediately comes to mind when we talk about deception technology is this, is deception technology the same as honeypots? And the short answer is no, right? Honeypots were the first form of deception technology. IT security researchers started using honeypots in the 90s with the intent to deceive malicious actors who had made it into the network and, you know, uh, it, when interacting, right? And in this, in this way, honeypots would sort of gather and assess behaviors of malicious, malicious actors. They were not created for threat detection. That wasn't the original right. purpose, right? However, things have changed a great deal in the years since honeypots were created, including the advent of deception technology. Um, honeypots are limited in scope and easy for professional malicious actors to identify. They can see them coming a mile away. Right. Accomplished attackers and hackers pretty quickly figure out they aren't real. Logistics also play a role with honeypots. Uh, they're difficult. They're difficult, really, to widely distribute. They require significant resources to maintain and implement. So you can't just set them out there and forget about them. So security teams usually only deploy this limited number of them. That means there's never enough to really effectively detect threats. A honeypot counts on the hope that attacker will accidentally trip over it or be lured into it. I think about Winnie the Pooh in the in the woods when I think about a honey pot. I don't know. Um, but things like experience and crowdsourcing and widely available tools now help attackers distinguish honeypots from real systems containing the valuable data they're targeting. To be an effective detection tool, deceptions must be inevitable, undetectable, and inescapable. But honeypots are still used for forensic analysis, threat hunting, developing responses to malicious behavior, honeypots may still prove useful, but not sort of as that centerpiece of modern deception technology strategy that's really focused on threat detection. All right, so honeypots and deception tech are clearly two different things. So how threat detection works is a little different and it works by actually tricking an attacker into going after false resources within your system. It mimics the kind of digital assets an organization would normally have within their network infrastructure. And but these are just traps or decoys. And so when a hacker goes after them, they actually don't damage business mission critical systems. 
the aim of threat detection tech is to fool an attacker into thinking that they've made it, that they've gotten in, they've penetrated the system. And and you can think about them, you know, executing a successful privilege escalation attack. And as they engage in activity, the activity that they think is going to give them rights as a network administrator, they're really just tooling around. They're not getting any extra rights. They're having no significant impact on your infrastructure. And so, you know, they're not really making the inroads they might think they are. Um, another key element of threat detection tech is that it features a notification system. And this notification system is configured to record attacker activity. So once your server receives a notification, it starts recording what the hacker is doing in, in the specific areas they're attacking. And in this way, cyber detection tech can provide some really valuable intelligence to your IT teams regarding the attack methodologies of hackers. So it really is well beyond what a honeypot can or would ever be able to do. Um, another benefit of deception tech techniques is that they enable an IT team to ascertain which assets are the most attractive to attackers. For example, like, um, you know, it's safe to assume a database filled with user information like payment data, names, addresses, social security numbers would be an attractive target. And with with security deception technology, you can verify that these are indeed the assets that attackers are after. Um, another, what I think is a super cool benefit of deception tech is that you can determine the exact kind of data a hacker is after by mimicking environments that contain one or more of these types of information. So for example, you can create fake databases containing social security numbers, names, addresses, account login, credentials, and specific company principles that really are fake. Um, and then you can observe which, uh, which assets the attackers choose to target. This gives you more insight into what they're looking for. And of course, it can help you drive your strategies moving forward. So it is absolutely no surprise to us that deception tech is gaining traction. And I'm going to say, I'm a fan. Yeah, totally. Um, and, but let's, let's double click and dig in a little bit deeper here on the importance of deception tech. Um, so some of the things that you know you're going to want to think about is the benefits that it derives right um because it, it will having deception technology in, in place uh will actually decrease attacker dwell time on the network which is a big deal dwell time mm -hmm. is a problem people don't even know that there are attackers sitting in their network right um the deep well, and, 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 I, and I will say dwell time is generally speaking, infinitely larger than most of us expect. Right, exactly. It's way larger than I don't want to misquote the numbers, but it's it's hundreds of days. Yeah, generally. Right. So I don't want to get the exact number wrong, but it's way longer than people yeah. think it is. Um, but in order for the decoy asset to work, it's got to be attractive enough sort of you alluded to this, to the cyber attacker actually thinking they're stealing a legitimate asset. Yeah. However, at some point, the infiltration will, will stop when IT thwarts the attack from spreading and attackers figure out that they'll be discovered sooner than later. Alternatively, the attacker may quickly realize that the attack is on decoy assets and that the entirety of an organization's assets can't be stolen. So the attacker might just pick up and leave realizing they're not going to get anywhere, right? Um, another benefit of having decoy technology is you can expedite the average time to detect and remediate threats. So because of the resources involved in deception technology, IT teams typically consider a cyber attack on decoy assets a special mission, and they concentrate their efforts on studying behaviors and movements. And because of the focus, when, author when unauthorized access is discovered or unusual behaviors are observed, IT is going to be able to move more quickly because they're going to have seen the pattern that is coming. So in that way, it, you know, having decoy technology in place really expedites the average time, not only to discover the asset, but to address the threat. Yeah. And then the last thing that it, you know, another thing that it does, and, and maybe one of the more important things, anybody that, you know, that works in a SOC will tell you about 40% of the alerts that they get 
are, you know, false positives, yeah. right? And that means that they're answering out of the hundred alerts that they're answering, forty are wrong, just bad, and sixty have something maybe there, right? But what decoy technology does is it reduces alert fatigue, so it's cutting back on the number of times they're actually getting alerted to a false positive. And this makes them actually focus more efficiently on the alerts that are coming in. Yeah, I think that all of these things, right? Decreasing dwell time, expediting the time to detect and remediate, reducing alert fatigue, which is such a big deal, all so, so much an important part of the value prop here. Again, I'm a fan. So let's talk a little bit though about what kind of cyber attacks can be detected by threat detection tech. Um, there are account hijacking attempts or attacks, and this is, involves an attacker trying to take over someone's account using stolen credentials, a very, very common uh, method used by threat actors today. Um, Credential theft centers around uh, an attacker gaining access to a list of credentials and then using those credentials in a later, a future attack. Um, and, and the thing I think that's important here, whether we're talking about dwell time, whether we're talking about stolen credentials, you know, the thing about threat actors is that they are extraordinarily patient. So sometimes being able to access information that they know they can use as a future time is just as important, just as compelling to them as being able to get in and and wreak some havoc right now. So um, I think that's important. IoT attacks, Internet of Things attacks. So these happen when a hacker targets IoT connected devices using what they presume will be weaker access credentials like default passwords to gain access to an organization's network. You know, um, there have been some um, there have been some happening in, in cybersecurity space in the last week or so around um, devices that are internet connected that are not that don't have robust security protocols attached to them. And I'll give you an example. You know, Joe, you and I both office from home, and both of us have routers that we use that connect us to the internet that we probably don't think about after the moment we set them up and walk away, right? But Far too many people set up things like routers and just use the default passwords. Yeah. They're not creating unique passwords. And in many instances, some of these devices are created. Security is not a foundational part of the development process, and unfortunately, in many instances. So it's just little things like this. And, and the other thing that I think is important that people don't realize, you know, our lives by by virtue of, you know, connected things today. I mean, we don't stop sometimes stop and think about it. But, you know, if you have um, a uh, connected TV, connected refrigerator, connected uh, smart, um, smart lights. I mean, there's all kinds of things in Amazon Alexa, Alexa, rather an Apple um iPod, HomePod device, all of these things are connected to the internet. All of these things present attractive endpoints for threat actors to get access in. So they understand do. what's they that? Do. I just want to interject something. If y'all yeah. don't have it set up, set up a VLAN at home, yeah. right? Segregate your home devices from your corporate device. It's not that hard to do. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. back off. I'm back off. <laughs> Back off my sofa. You, know, you know what? Security geeks are going to geek. So totally, <laughs> I'm totally with you on that. Okay. So I've talked about account hijacking attacks. I've talked about credential theft. I've talked about IoT attacks. There are also lateral movement attacks. And we touched on this earlier, but these allow a hacker to try trying to move east to west or laterally through a network. And they do this first by gaining access to one system and then trying to expand their attack to other systems that the computer is connected to. And in this way, they can take advantage of the interconnected assets and other devices within your organization. Um, there's also spear phishing attacks. And this happens when an attacker goes after a specific person or a group of people within the organization to try to trick them into providing sensitive information. With deceptive, deception tech cybersecurity, you can learn how to prevent these kind of attacks as well. So lots of different use cases here. Yeah, those are great examples. And I wanted to take a minute here and toss out some of the deception tech trends Shelley and I are seeing across the industry it's, as we talk to customers, as we talk to vendors, and they share some of the use cases they're seeing. First of all, security data lake deployment. 
So enterprises are implementing massive security data repositories from AWS, Google, IBM, Snowflake, lots of vendors. Deception technologies will continuously analyze this data to better understand both normal and anomalous behavior. And this data is going to serve as the baseline for deception models, which is pretty cool. Yeah. API connectivity. Oh, this is, this is, this is, <laughs> this is, this is a big one. Uh, yeah, it's a big <laughs> one. It's a big one. Um, so aside from security data lakes, deception technology will plug into infrastructure as a service, asset management systems, or what Gardner calls cyber asset attack surface management, because we all need another term in tech. That another we're not, acronym. Right? <laughs> Vulnerability management systems, uh, cloud security posture management, that's CSPM, yeah. just another acronym for you. But this connectivity allows deception systems to really get this full picture of an organization's hybrid IT applications and infrastructure. That's where the baselining comes in. Um, and then generative AI, because we can't do an episode without mentioning AI, right? We just, it's not possible. Um, based upon large language models or LLMs, generative AI can generate authentic looking decoys, like big assets. Uh, lures, which are fake services, synthetic network traffic, and breadcrumbs, which are fake resources. Kelly, that Shelley had mentioned those earlier, fake resources placed upon, you know, on real assets. And so the cyber criminal goes, oh, is that real? It looks tasty. Right. Um, these deception elements can be deployed strategically, automatically, across a hybrid network in great volumes, right? Which is what honeypots were not, right? They were sort right. of a manual play. Right. So, Obviously, yeah. Deception yeah. tech is like well beyond honeypot. So I think that's yeah. that's pretty cool. You know, one of the things that Joe and I always like to do on this um, Security Angle series is we like to take a look at who some of the players are in the space. And, you know, it, it's great to see deception tech being more widely adopted. It is not at all surprising. And there's every reason to, to believe that we'll continue to see that increase. Um, you know, as we begin to wrap the show and this topic of the use of threat detection tech as a part of cybersecurity strategy, here are so we, so here are some of the top players in the threat deception space. Um, let's see, a Calvio is one, Fortinet, Zscaler, Smokescreen, Sentinel One, Inside IDR, Cyanet Deception, and Morphosec um, are all threat deception platforms or solutions that we're going to dive into. We're going to just explain a little bit about some of these. A Calvio, I'll start, is um, is a cyber detection cyber detection tech provider. They help enterprises actively protect against advanced security threats. Their product is called Shadow Plex Advanced Threat Defense, and it offers early threat detection with precision and speed, obviously important, using deception tech and AI. The Acavio platform is built using 25 patented technologies. It can be deployed autonomously across on-prem OT and cloud workloads. I think that's pretty attractive. Shadowplex, ATD, Casso, a wide net with its various deception strategies, including decoys, breadcrumbs, baits, lures. These deception elements help stop threats, you know, as we talked about here, before they cause harm. And they enable the auto triaging of deception events using advanced analytics. The high fidelity incidents identified by the system can be forwarded to your SIM, your SOAR, or IR platforms. Shadowplex is mapped to be MITRE attack framework to the MITRE attack framework, and it provides real time automated endpoint quarantine and high interaction decoys for advanced threat protection. Pretty cool stuff. Um, the platform integrates seamlessly with numerous solutions, uh, such as again, SOAR, SIM, EDR, AD, network management, email servers, and soft well, software management solutions. And all of these integrations allow Shadowplex to leverage network discovery, gather forensic data from endpoints, deploy breadcrumbs and baits, and then execute automated responses for a comprehensive security strategy. Really a pretty cool solution. Fortinet has a product called Forta Deceptor. 
It's a cybersecurity solution focused on providing early detection and isolation of sophisticated human and automated attacks. And as part of the Fortinet SecOps platform, it detects and responds to in-network attacks like stolen credential usage, lateral movement, man in the middle, and ransomware. Forward Deceptor also helps organizations shift defense strategies from a reactive standpoint to proactive. We are very big fans of that around here and has an intrusion-based detection system that is layered with contextual intelligence. This generates sort of high fidelity alerts based on real-time engagement, provides attack activity analysis and isolation that helps decrease the burden on SOC teams dealing with false positive alerts of which there are often many. Um, Ford Interceptor also correlates incident, incident and campaign activities. It collects IOCs and TTP, TTPs. It enables automated dynamic protection across OT, IOT, IT environments, and it allows on-demand creation of deception decoys based on things that are newly discovered. Again, this goes to the, the proactive stance here, but it, it, the on-demand creation of deception decoys based on newly discovered vulnerabilities or suspicious activity that are, is identified. So Forte Deceptor integrates with Fortinet security fabric and third-party security controls, including SimSort, ER, and then Sandbox for visibility and accelerated response. Um, Last but not least, the platform captures and analyzes attack activities in real time, which is an important part of this equation. It provides those detailed forensics that IT teams need. It can quarantine infected endpoints away from the production network. Um, it's been designed for easy deployment and maintenance, which I think is something that pretty much everyone is looking for these days. It can operate um, in both online and in air-gapped modes, and it has a ruggedized version available for enhanced protection. Another vendor with a deception tech solution is Zscaler. And, um, and it's probably important to note that, you know, when it comes to cybersecurity, there's no one technique that's 100% effective. And the best results come when you have multiple technologies working together and sharing information, minimizing your attack surfaces, and, and then, of course, speeding up the ability to re remediate incidents. I like how Zscaler, and Zscaler offers a cloud-native, cloud-scalable suite of offerings. Zscaler approaches this with its Zscaler defense solution, and it does this by assuming that every single access or user request is a hostile one. And until both the identity and the context of the request are authenticated and authorized, access is not granted anywhere beyond just the minimum required resources in what's called the least privilege access. And in a zero trust environment, deception decoys act kind of like tripwires, you know, and, and compromised users are detected, lateral movement is tracked, and Zscaler's deception serves up what it calls an easy button for detecting and stopping sophisticated threats by, you know, sophisticated threats that target zero trust environments by luring, detecting, and intercepting sophisticated attack attackers with decoys and those false paths that we talked about before. I'll also mention here that Mumbai-based cybersecurity startup Smokescreen, which was acquired by Zscaler in 2021, um, its deception tech solution that's used to blanket the network with decoys, you know, kind of not surprising given its name, right? Smokescreen offers out-of-the-box integrations, again, with SIMs, firewalls, EDR, proxy, threat, Intel feed, SOAR, and the like. So it's really kind of a, a, I think it's a pretty interesting solution as well. So I'll hand it off to you, Joe. I know you've got some companies that are on your radar screen. I do. And, you know, I'm actually pretty impressed by the Zscaler portfolio. Yeah. Because they're not a, a one-trick pony, right? So they've got products that sort of interconnect with one yeah. another so that a customer can go and say, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, I'm worried about not only zero trust network access, but I'm, I'm also want to put a decoy technology on top of it. And oh, by the way, I wouldn't mind, you know, pr protecting um, some other assets as well, like maybe doing CDN or things right. of that nature, right? So they'll, they'll do other things, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so, but I've got a group of solutions I want to talk about um, that might be interesting to folks. 
The first one, I just like the name, Sentinel Singularity Holograph. <laughs> the holograph part is cool, okay? Uh, so this product uses dynamic deception technologies and a matrix of distributed network decoy systems to transform the entire network into a trap designed to deceive in-network attackers and their automated tools. And the decoys are strategically placed to engage adversaries and insiders, which helps. Notice I said adversaries and insiders, right? Because if you've got insider threat, it's going to capture that. Um, and it helps to facilitate investigations and a gathering of adversarial intelligence. So this tech is intended to support the identification of active compromises within a network and plays a critical role in snaring adversaries as they move laterally and interact with decoy assets and lures. I moved my hand laterally just in case you didn't know it was lateral. Right? Singularity hologram not only enable organizations to visualize and strengthen their defenses, but also complements and integrates with EDR um, and XDR technologies. So the feeds go right in. Um, even better, it can be combined with singularity identity. So back to sort of a comprehensive portfolio and active directory uh, protections. And this creates that sort of comprehensive solution. Yeah. I'm also a fan of singularity holograms, wide ranging deception and decoy techniques, which are designed to entice adversaries to perform recon by mimicking um, production operation systems, applications, data, industrial control systems, IoT devices, and cloud functions. The approach is important as it helps organizations actually reduce the time required to detect, analyze, and stop attackers while gaining that baseline information and getting insights into those tactics and techniques and procedures. Right. Um, my next one is Rapid7's Insight. Um, IDR, and it's a security solution that specializes in incident detection and response, authentication, monitoring, and endpoint visibility. So this EDR or XDR system is designed to identify unauthorized access from both internal and external threats, again, exactly. high suspicious activities uh, to streamline the detection price, uh, process. And so Insights IDR is cloud native, is cloud scalable and it unifies and transforms multiple telemetry resources for improved coverage. Insight IDR uses advanced deception technologies and can by attack with behavior. So we're seeing a trend here, right? Nice. All of these guys are looking to create baselines. Um, they're good. It creates honeypots, honey users, credentials, files. These traps really help detect attackers more early, which is something that you pointed to earlier, right? Reduce dwell time. Reduce right. dwell time. Um, and they use user behavior analytics. You've probably seen or heard of that before, or UBA, right? Yeah. So it's not only it's not only protecting, it's it's looking for behaviors. Um, and you know, it, it's going to do all the things. It's going to take fake credentials that are used elsewhere on the network. Um, it's going to systematically alert, you know, the admins. It's going to integrate deception technology, UBA, endpoint yeah. devices, uh, lots of things. And then my my next one is Morphosec. So Morphosec offers what they're calling moving target defense, and it automates moving target defense. And it's designed to counter the advanced attacks from threat actors we're seeing today. So. You've got next-gen antivirus, you've got endpoint protection platforms, you've got response, EDR, and XDR solution to stop known attacks by recognizing signatures and behavior patterns, right? But they often don't detect other more advanced attacks like zero-day, malware variants, supply chain attacks. MTD, which is this moving target defense, yet another acronym. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, MTD. You prevent these threats by using system polymorphism. Man, that's a big one. That's um, so the system's name. Kind of explains the name there. Right? Polymorphism. <laughs> there, it's like more than seven letters, so I wasn't sure I could pull it off. But it holds it in memory to hide operating system 
and application targets in, a, in an unpredictable manner. So and he used um, an analogy to describe this that resonated. Assume an expert thief is able to pick the lock of any door. The goal of MTD is not to build a better lock, but instead to make the door and the door lock difficult or impossible to even find. I love it. You can't find it, right? Right. And my last one, Signet Deception. So Signet is an all-in-one managed cybersecurity platform that provides out-of-the-box solutions that include network detection response, NDR, deception, and port scanning. Um, who remembers port knocking? I remember it. So the sign-in platform utilizes deception tech to deploy de decoy users and monitor for unauthorized access. So Signet's user behavior analytics, again, we see that term again, user behavior, monitors user behavior to spot and isolate compromised accounts, and it continuously monitors and correlates user activity against other events. So it's looking for lateral movement. It's looking for anomalies. It's rapidly detecting suspicious suspicious user activities like hey this guy that sits in new york is all of a sudden signing in from london is that is that suspicious right he's never been in that time zone before it looks for things like that and all this is packaged with deception technology as part of the uba solution yeah so lots of good stuff here Right. Well, and I think that we're going to be seeing so much more on the user behavior analytics front. I mean, this is not something new, but I think we're kind of in the in the nascent stages here. But we're seeing a lot of UBA starting to be integrated into these solutions. And it makes perfect sense. Right. I mean, watching how people behave is what shows us what's going on and what shouldn't be going on. Right. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, there is clearly a lot going on in the world of deception tech, which is exactly why we wanted to discuss it today. Some experts predict that deception tech will become more evasive throughout the rest of this year and eventually a security ops staple by the end of 2025. Some skeptics consider deception tech only for elite organizations like government entities, think the NSA and others. I think that what we're seeing on the innovation front from cybersecurity vendors is that they are getting exponentially less complex. They don't require deep technical expertise and are becoming, I mean, I think vendors are making them more and more easy to set up and deploy. And I think that's what users want. There's always going to be more advanced threat detection offerings, but I think we'll start to see the use of more basic configurations starting to become the norm. And that's a good thing for organizations who are working to improve their SecOps around threat detection in response. I, for one, am a huge fan of threat detection technology. I am confident that we are going to see more and more of this and more vendors playing in this space. And I'm pretty sure you agree with me. Yeah, I do. It's yeah. just, it's going to, it's going to get interesting. Not that it already isn't, but it's going right. to get more interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Joe Peterson, thanks for joining me today. And to our viewing and listening audience, I'm Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at The Cube Research, part of the Silicon Angle, The Cube family of companies, and your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. See you next time.